Hey YouTubers, got another video review for you this week. This one's from Baxter Performance. And what this is, is a product that uh, basically eliminates a dry start on your Jeep Gladiator and pretty much any of your uh, Pinstar V6 engines. And what happens is, is on these engines, they run a just a, a cartridge style filter and there's no anti-drain bag valve. So when you start your vehicle up, all the engine oil is in the oil pan and so you basically are dry starting your engine and they've done some tests on it and they say within like 30 minutes all your oil is back down in the oil pan none of your oil is at the top of the motor so when you start it your oil pump has to pump that oil to the top of the engine and lubricate all those vital components and if you've never paid attention to it get out there on a cold morning and start your vehicle up and listen to your engine real close and you can hear you know the valve train up top making noise so they have come out with a product that removes that stock cartridge filter and you screw this in to where the cartridge filter is and basically this acts as a uh, one-way check valve and you can see that it has uh, a check valve on the inside of here to keep all the oil on the top part of the engine so when you start it up all the oils at the top and you know it goes right to your vital engine components but then also it makes it to where changing your oil is a little bit easier and not that it's real hard anyways on the, the Jeep Gladiator because it's right on top but they uh, eliminate the cartridge style filter and they fix it to where you can put just a, a standard spin on filter uh, onto the adapter and you know I know what you're thinking uh, if you uh, go to unscrew this filter to do an oil change, when you unscrew it, all the oil is going to be all over the top of the, the engine and it's going to make a mess. Well, they thought of that too. They put a little port here on the side so you can put a, a valve on the side of it and put air pressure to it like you would your tires and it opens that one-way check valve and it causes all the oil to flow down out of the filter so you can unscrew it and change your oil. So, I'm going to be doing the installation on a 2021 Jeep Gladiator. This thing's got 20,000 miles on it roughly and uh, we're going to test it out and uh, see how easy it is to install and see if I can notice a, a difference in it whenever, whenever it starts up. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start this off by saying you're going to need a good light and so I'm going to be using my Goose Grips light that's a suction cup mount to be able to see and uh, this thing's amazing. It's flexible, puts your light where you need it and if you're interested in it check out my my video that I did on it, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. But come a little closer and I'm going to show you what we're going to be removing. Right here where the oil filter um, housing is, you're going to loosen that. And I've already loosened it. And you're going to go ahead and pull out the cartridge style filter. And you can see, I mean, lit, we've literally uh, been uh, home maybe 10 minutes and the, there's a little bit of oil dripping off of it, like drip and then nothing and then drip. But you can see that this, this filter is, for the most part, just bone dry. You know, it has a little bit of oil on it, but it's, it's, it's dry. All right, guys. So first things first, what you want to do is... Notice that when you, if you was to try to put the adapter down in up underneath this cover right here, the adapter is going to stick up and when you screw your filter on, uh, you're not going to be able to do it because this little uh, piece right here is sticking in the way and this is just a, a piece off the intake. It serves absolutely no purpose that I know of and uh, I'm going to be taking just a, a little, uh, maybe a hacksaw blade and cutting uh, just right here this little um uh, area this little plastic piece and that way it'll allow me to put that screw on filter in there and I can get my hand in there to uh, screw it down onto the Baxter performance adapter so uh, I'm gonna take and put the rag up underneath the intake there and like I said I'm gonna try to attempt this with just using a hacksaw blade all right as you guys can see I took just a, a hacksaw blade and you can see that it's rounded on the bottom so you know if you're sawing it's not going to poke into anything uh, but you can use whatever tool you want if you can get a you know a sawzall down in there or a dremel or just a three inch uh, cutting wheel 
down in there you use whatever you're comfortable with i thought well uh, the hacksaw blade would be probably the easiest for me and it's soft plastic so let's see how easy it cuts through there and you're basically just cutting a little bit off uh, because you just need a little bit of clearance see that I got it cut off now if you want to go back and cut some more off you can or if you want to trim that down you can uh, I just wanted to cut this little piece off where I'd have enough clearance to get that filter started in there and you know like I said it's not gonna hurt it it doesn't cut into the intake or any of that uh, so you're good um, but like I said if you want to clean this up and make it a little bit prettier you can but it's not gonna hurt anything the way that it sits and you can see that I caught all the, you know, plastic shavings here in this rag. And so, we're good to go. Uh, next, you want to grab your uh, Baxter Performance Adapter. And you want to take a real close look right in here. And you can see that little silver piece right there. That is called your locking cleat. And what that does uh, is, it, is when you screw this adapter down, you take a, an Allen key and you tighten this little... Uh, bolt right in there you can see there's a, a allen key head bolt or a hex bolt or whatever you want to call it and you just tighten this down and when you do it uh, uh, raises those that cleat up or down and basically locks this adapter in place so when you go to undo your oil filter uh, it doesn't spin this around so it's just a, a safety precaution just to lock it down and so we're going to go ahead and uh, install this but first things first when you go to install it um, make sure that these uh, threads are lined up the make sure the threads on that cleat are lined up with the threads that's on the adapter I don't know how well you can see that and like I said if you need to adjust them up or down just use that adjustment screw right in there so now you can see where I've cut this piece off I've went ahead and taken the the uh, cap off that housing and then now I'm going to take the adapter and I'm going to set it down in there. But before I do, I just want you to see that there's two ports on this uh, adapter. And the reason they put two ports on there is so whenever you screw it down, um, you're going to block off one of these ports. And then the other, you're going to leave it open for that valve so you can put air pressure to it to get the oil uh, out of the, the uh, filter when you go to change your oil. So you guys are going to see me screw this down and I'm going to screw it down to it bottoms out. Now remember before you screw this in, make sure you take a little engine oil, put on the threads and that way it goes in with a little less resistance. And then once you get it tightened down, you know that there's a port right there up underneath my finger. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Let me try to get you some more light that port there well you know that's where your uh, your uh, your valve is going to be and so that tells you that you need to block this port off on the other side uh, because it's not going to be used so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take and I'm going to just mark that with my finger so I'll know that's where I need the valve and then I'm going to screw unscrew it And if you're wondering, how did I mark that with my finger? My fingers are a little bit oily, so I just uh, rubbed a little oil on it so I'd know where, where it was. But I'm just going to unscrew this, take it out, and I'll show you guys 
what I'm talking about here in just a second. Now this thing does have some uh, pretty long amount of threads on it, so it does take a few seconds to unscrew it. Man, I don't know if you guys can see this at home, but right there is where I marked it. That's where my valve needs to be. And then over here, this needs to be uh, plugged. So they give you a little, I believe it's a quarter inch uh, pipe plug that's going to fit in there. And I just take a an Allen wrench and tighten that plug up. Doesn't say anything in the directions about uh, putting any kind of thread sealing or any of that or Teflon tape on there. So I'm just going to put it in there till it's tight. All right, so next they tell you to take and lubricate the O-ring seal with some clean engine oil. And that's what I'm going to do here is just rub some Mobile One on there. That's what I use in the Jeep. And we get that O-ring all nice and, and uh, lubed up. Then you're going to drop it over and pull it over the threads real carefully. Try not to tear it. And then once it's in place, you go ahead and go to your next little O-ring and then you want to take and lubricate it. And it just fits at the end of the housing right here. You see right there and then go ahead and lubricate this seal and you just take and rub some oil on that and then if it's me I would go ahead and put a little more oil on your threads right in here so you're not screwing into plastic with dry sharp threads so just put a little oil there so I just wanted to clarify that when you put the O-ring on right here, that it goes in that little top, the very top groove. There's one down below it, but you don't want to put it there. Uh, you put it at the very top to keep everything sealed out. And, uh, you know, if you've, when you moved it or, or whatever, if it's gotten dry, go ahead and re-lubricate it. And then now, once you've got that O-ring on, this O-ring on, and everything lubricated, and you got your plug in, then what you want to do is just take and put it back down in there, tighten it back up. All right, so I went ahead and got the uh, adapter screwed on in there, and the port is on the back side facing towards the intake, and then the front port is uh, right here in the front. Lubricate the threads on here with some engine oil, and then I'm going to screw this into the port, and then it'll be facing up. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to screw it in and it's going to be going just like that and what this is is your um, Schrader valve so when you go to put air compressed air into this uh, to clean the the oil out of the filter uh, it'll be easy to access this this valve right in here to put compressed air into it all right so I've got this uh, little adapter down here threaded into the Baxter Performance adapter and then you're just gonna tighten it up and then a little trick for you if you get to a spot where you can't get in there with your hand to tighten it you can take a 15 16 wrench and use the 12 point box end to stick it over that fitting right there like that and then you can Pull it out and give you a little more oomph to get in there to tighten it. So you got to work with it to, to get it over there. But you can see that it really helps to use that wrench to tighten that out. Also, if you get to an area where you can't fit that big uh, 5 16 wrench over or 15 16 wrench over that adapter there you can always take a 9 16 wrench and stick it here on the top to help you give you a little bit more of a, a quarter turn on it and then of course you're going to hit the intake and uh, you'll have to use your other wrench to get in there to spin it around a little tighter
All right, so you can see that I went ahead and got that 90 degree fitting put in place. And then next, I'm gonna take this uh, Schrader valve. You can see right there, it looks just like a Schrader valve like you would find on any tire. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate the threads with some oil. And then I'm gonna screw it on to that 90 degree fitting. And then once you get it uh, on there, then you're gonna use a 7 16 wrench to get in here and tighten it up. Now, if you can't get in here with a wrench, uh, then you can use a, a, a deep well socket, but uh, just whatever you got handy. But I wanted to be able to show you how to tighten that up. And then afterwards, after I get it all tightened up over here, then I'm gonna go back and lock down the locking cleat. Uh, the reason I didn't lock it down beforehand is because you might need to turn it uh, back more this way or more this way uh, to allow you some clearance. Um, so I'm gonna wait till after I get this all tightened up and then I'm gonna go back with an Allen key and tighten the locking cleat that locks the threads down. So I went ahead and put on a little uh, Schrader valve cap and I went ahead and oiled the threads on that. And then next, I'm gonna take the Allen key and I'm gonna tighten up the locking cleat. So when you go to unscrew your oil filter, it doesn't back off. Now you don't wanna go balls to the walls on this thing. You just wanna make sure that it's it's tight enough to uh, you know not, not back out, but you ain't gotta tighten it down to where you crack that plastic housing down there. So just use common sense, don't over torque it. And then uh, once you go ahead and tighten that down, then you're good to go. So um, now that you're done, uh, what you're gonna do is install your oil filter. They do have a list of filters that'll work with this adapter and it's pretty common filters. Um, it, it says as long as it's a 22 by 1.5, threads uh, you'll sh you should be fine and they list a pure later uh, PLS 22500 or a Wix 57045 or a mobile one M1212 and so I've got the mobile one uh, M1212 and I'm gonna go ahead, went ahead and lube the o-ring up and come a little closer now you're going to just install it like you would on a normal vehicle that has a screw-on oil filter. And you should be good to go. Now, once you get it installed, you can see that I have the little uh, Schrader valve uh, just right at the perfect angle. So whenever I come out here to change my oil, I'm going to take and unscrew the little cap right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some compressed air down in there. And you can see that it, it's clearance really well but to miss the alternator here and to miss the oil filter. And you can just stick your air nozzle down in there and put compressed air to it for like 30 seconds. And that compressed air will open the check valve in the bottom of the Baxter adapter and it'll allow all that oil to drain out. But uh, keep in mind when, you know, um, the check valve is closed, the, um, you know, it just allows the oil to stay at the, at the top of the engine. Plus, you also have an anti-drain back valve in the filter. So you've got two different types of, uh, two different ways that the oil is going to stay back at the top of the, the engine and you don't have to worry about it. So anyways, we're going to check your oil level because one other benefit uh, to running this adapter is you're going to have about probably about a half a quart uh, more uh, of oil capacity simply because y your filter is is going to hold uh, quite a bit of oil and then the adapter that fit down into the housing uh, is is not going to fill that whole void up so you're going to have a little bit more uh, oil capacity so definitely uh, check your oil uh, before you get started and then uh, once you crank it and everything make, make sure there's no leaks and then uh, we're going to uh, go back and check the oil afterwards uh, because once you crank it it's going to fill this filter up with oil and you're going to be a little bit of low of oil uh, at that point and then you just want to fill it back up so lastly um, ba baxter performance gives you a sticker and i went ahead and mounted mine here on the front of course i'm going to be the only one doing the oil changes on it because i don't 
trust it taking it to uh, these little Jiffy Lube places. But, you know, if you do, I'll just put the sticker on here. And whoever uh, has any questions about how to change the oil in this, they can scan that uh, little uh, area right in there. And it pops up uh, the Baxter Performance website. And they can look and see how to uh, change the oil. But it's self-explanatory for most people. And uh, anyways, we're going to go ahead and crank this thing up. And... You know, of course, when it first cranks up, it's going to sound uh, like it's a dry start because it's got to fill that oil filter up. But uh, from here on out, once that filter's um, filled up with oil, then you shouldn't have any uh, dry start uh, issues. So we're going to go ahead and crank it up now and go ahead, hit it. Check for any kind of oil leaks or anything. Everything looks nice and dry, so I'm going to check it out real good, and then again, I'm going to check the oil in it after it sets for a few minutes, and and, uh, and then we're going to go from there. All right, guys, so I went ahead and uh, let the vehicle set for a few minutes, and, you know, got to say, I'm very impressed with the uh, fit and finish of the Baxter adapter is very easy to install. You know, just takes just a few minutes. And, you know, if I wasn't filming and I could uh, just do everything just, you know, without having to use the camera and all that, then, you know, it probably wouldn't have took me maybe 30, 45 minutes. But, you know, when you're videoing and all this, trying to make a good video for you guys at home, it takes a little bit longer. But uh, anyways, uh, I've started the vehicles several times and, and I got to say, it does sound better when you go to crank it up and, you know, um, it doesn't sound like there's a dry start. You know, just be careful. Uh, whoever changes your oil, you don't want them to mess nothing up because, you know, if they was to try to unscrew this whole housing area uh, with that locking cleat, um, you know, tightened up into that plastic housing, uh, if you was to try to force it, you know, it's going to, it's going to break. And so just make sure that, you know, you, Whoever's changing your oil knows what the heck they're doing. But anyways, like I said, it's been sitting for a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and crank it up and let you see what it sounds like at startup. Now, I don't know how well you guys can hear at home, but I definitely didn't get those noise noises like I was getting before at startup. You know, uh, you could just hear like the, the valve train making noise because it was dry and you know think about it you know this jeep with a start stop feature you know it's doing a lot of starting and stopping and so i try to disable that every chance i get and, and of course you know if you do do it too much then you're not going to charge your secondary battery on here and you're going to have problems with that so you know uh, every once in a while i do let it start and stop just to, to charge that that battery up but anyways uh Again, if you're interested in the Goose Grips light that I've got going on right here, check out uh, the link in the description for it. And, you know, you see the Banks Ram Air air filter I put on that. That's been a good uh, performance mod. This adapter it seems to be the ticket. Now, I can't speak for longevity, but it really does seem like it's going to work. I did talk to uh, the owner. I believe it was the owner. And uh, he said that he had one on his Jeep from the very... Uh, first couple thousand miles that he, he bought it and hadn't had any problems out of it and I've heard nothing but good uh, out of the, this product and so appreciate you guys watching and please like and subscribe and and make sure you give me a thumbs up it really helps my videos uh, and until next time have a good one